This video is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. If you're looking for cards in the US, look no further as you can use the promo code MTGMUDSTA to get you 5% off anything on the site. Or if you're in Canada like me, you can use the same promo code at Multizone to get 10% off your orders of singles. If cards aren't what you're looking for, Original Magic Art has playmats, tokens, and sweet art that you can use that same promo code to help you get 5% off your order there. If you're looking to bling out your cards, using Alter Sleeves is a great way to do so, and you can click the affiliate link in my About section to help out the channel as you make an order. And if you just want to help out the channel, you can always consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month and join the generic Goblin Gang. Hey gang, and welcome back. Today's game has me playing Orvar again, keeping a Castle Vantress, Three Islands, Sliverhive, Archaeomancer, and Sword of the Anime. Mark is playing Yuriko, keeping Solemn Simulacrum, Sakashima of a Thousand Faces, Rizeketh the Foul-Blooded, Underground Sea, and Three Swamps. Derek is playing Obun, keeping a Crozen Verge, Two Plains, a Forest, Terra Eternal, Beast Within, and Kadama's Reach. Last but not least, Chris is playing Selena Dark Angel and keeps Solemnity, Phyrexian Unlife, Ancient Craving, Swords to Plowshares, Swamp, Godless Shrine, and a Barren Moor. Mark wins the die roll and starts us off. He plays a Tap Sunken Hollow as the first land for the game and passes. Chris plays a Godless Shrine, passing. Derek also plays a Tap Land with a Crows and Verge coming in and passes to me. I break from the mold, play an island because I'm a trendsetter, and pass it back. Mark plays a swamp, passing. Chris plays a swamp as well, but casts a talisman of hierarchy before passing. Derek plays a forest. I play a sliver hive and cast sword of the anime. Mark plays an island and breaks every rule of EDH by casting Yuriko from the command zone. Chris casts a Mana Crypt, and then pays 4 for an Ancient Craving, drawing 3 and losing 3. He then discards down to Hand Size, passing to Derek. Derek plays a Plains and casts Kadama's Reach. He finds 2 Mountains, putting 1 to Hand and 1 to the Field, and passes. I just play a Castle Vantress and pass back to Mark. Mark plays a Land and then casts Sakashima, having the clone come in as a copy of Yuriko, he then moves to combat and swings the OG Yuriko at Chris, who can't block and takes the hit. This has Mark getting two triggers and he reveals Sublime Epiphany off the top, dealing six, and then reveals again Aminatu's Augury, dealing another eight. Having done a pretty decent chunk of damage this turn, he then discards down to hand size and passes to Chris. Chris untaps and wins the flip on a Mana Crypt. He then plays a Swamp and drops Axis of Mortality. Derek untaps and plays a Plains. He casts Beast Within and blows up the Sakashima copy of Yuriko and then ships it to me. My turn has me just playing a Ghost Quarter and then casting Orvar. Mark untaps and plays an Underground Sea. He moves to combat swinging Yuriko at Chris again and the Beast token at Derek. They both connect with Chris taking 1 and Derek taking 3, and Mark reveals off the top, but whiffs. Mark then pays 4 for Solemn Simulacrum, going to find a basic as he passes to Chris. Chris untaps and rolls for the Mana Crypt. He wins the roll, and then on his upkeep, swaps life totals with Mark using the access trigger, putting Mark to 21 and resetting Chris's life to 40. Chris then casts a Doom Whisperer, and plays it Baron Moor tapped, passing. Derek plays a Crawling Barons, and then casts his commander, Obun. Moving to combat, he chooses nothing and passes to me. I play a Griffin Canyon for my land for turn, and equip Orvar with the Sword of the Anime. I swing at Mark, and find an island, and Mark then blocks with the saddest robot, letting him perish to draw a card. Mark plays a land and moves to combat. This time Yuriko goes at me for one. But unfortunately, Mark whiffs again on her trigger. Keeping up his mana, he passes back to Chris. Chris untaps and stacks his triggers so the Axis of Mortality resolves last, and the Mana Crypt resolves first. He fails his flip, taking three. 
He then activates the Doom Whisperer and surveils until he goes down to one life. He then swaps life totals with me, and I drop to one, while Chris goes to 25. Chris then plays a Plains and casts a Viscopa Guild Mage, followed by Solemnity. Moving to combat, he swings the Doom Whisperer at Mark for 6, which drops Mark to 15, and with nothing else, Chris passes. Derek untaps and cracks his Crows and Verge, going to find two lands. He gets two counters on Obun, and then animates a land as he moves to combat. He swings a 6-6 land and his commander at Chris, who doesn't block and just takes the hit. In his second main phase, Derek then casts Terra Eternal and passes to me. I untap and play an island in my main phase. Orvar goes at Chris this time, finding me an island, and Chris, the gentleman that he is, gives Orvar lifelink, so I'm not going to die the Yuriko trigger. Chris then takes 4, and I gain 4 life. I then tap out for a Galecaster Colossus, which unfortunately is countered by Mark with the Sublime Epiphany. He counters the spell, copies the Beast token, draws a card, and bounces the Doom Whisperer back to Chris's hand. I'm all tapped out at this point, and have no choice but to pass to Mark. Mark untaps and moves to combat. He swings Yuriko at me and the Beast token to Chris. I take the one while Chris takes his six. And Mark flips the top card for the Yuriko trigger, revealing Flusterstorm and dealing one to his opponents. Mark's afraid of the board state at this point, and then taps out for Ugin. And once the Planeswalker resolves, down takes the walker by minus six to exile all color with permanents that cost six or less on the board. With nothing else, he passes. Chris untaps and dodges a bullet, passing his Mana Crypt flip. He then recasts Doom Whisperer, and follows up by casting a Phyrexian Unlife, passing it to Derek. Derek untaps and recasts Obun. He then plays a Treetop Village, putting a plus one plus one counter onto Obun, and moves to combat. He animates a land, and goes to combat, swinging it at Ugin to take the Dragon Walker out. My turn has me playing an island, recasting my commander, equipping him with the sword of the anime, and then passing back to Mark. Mark plays a swamp, and casts Twilight Prophet. He then casts an arcane adaptation, which as it comes in, he picks Ninja. Chris untaps and luckily passes his Mana Crypt trigger once more. He casts a Treasury Thrall and moves to combat. The Doom Whisperer goes at Mark, who opts to not block and just takes the hit. And with nothing else, Chris passes to Derek. Derek plays a land, putting another counter onto Obun. He then casts a Roiling Regrowth, sacrificing a forest to go and find two basics, and puts two more counters onto Obun. We then see a Kamal's Will, and since he controls his commanders, he's able to pick both modes, and animates three lands, and targets the Twilight Prophet. In response, Mark casts Flusterstorm, and forces Derek to pay the extra two. The spell still resolves though, and the Prophet gets taken out. Moving to combat, Derek then makes a mountain into a 7-7, and swings at Mark and Chris for 7 apiece. Mark takes the 7, while Chris jumps to the Thrall, and Derek then passes to me. I untap, and cast a Grand Architect. I swing Orvar at Mark, going to find a basic land, and then connecting and taking Mark out. I cast a Master of Waves, making 4 elemental tokens, and pass to Chris. Chris untaps and loses the Mana Crypt roll, dropping to minus one life. He then moves to combat and swings the Doom Whisperer at me, and it takes me out, and Chris then passes to Derek. Derek untaps and plays a land, putting another counter onto Obun. He casts Nissa World Waker, and upticks her to make a 4-4. He then animates the Crawling Barons, and uses Obun's trigger as he moves to combat to make another land into a creature, and swings them all at Chris. Chris promptly casts a Teferi's Protection, phasing out, and with nothing else, Derek passes. Chris untaps and loses the Crypt Roll, taking 3 Infect due to the Phyrexian Unlife being out. He then moves to combat and swings the Doom Whisperer at Derek's Nyssa, who with no blockers, gets taken out, and Chris passes back. 
Derek untaps and casts Broken Bonds, targeting the Frexian Unlife to destroy it. In response, Chris casts Swords to Plowshares on his own Dune Whisperer and gaining 6 life so that he goes up to a total of 5. The Broken Bond then resolves, and the enchantment gets destroyed, and Derek then casts an Ignition Team, having it come into play with 10 counters. He moves to combat, and swings all out at Chris, who before damage, casts Angel's Grace to save himself. Derek then passes to Chris. Chris untaps, and wins the flip to everyone's surprise. He then casts an Hour of Revelation, destroying all non-land permanents, which takes care of most of the board. With nothing else, he passes back to Derek. Derek untaps and animates Treetop Village. He then taps out for Kamal, Heart of Krosa, and moves to combat. With Kamal's trigger going on the stack as he moves to combat, Derek's team gets swole, and he swings out at Chris, who responds by tapping his talisman to go out on his own terms, crowning Derek the victor. Game review time. So the MVP for me this game was definitely Axis of Mortality. Chris's deck functioned beautifully. I was so impressed to see Doom Whisperer outside of a graveyard based deck, and using the activated ability on it just as something to dump life into was a stroke of genius. Considering the fact that he actually hardcasts his commander from the command zone, which for a Yuriko deck is considered very taboo, having Sakashima come in as a clone of her to double up on the triggers when one ninja connects was powerful. Mark's opponents lost 14 life in one swing, which can really speed up a game. My Orvar deck, unfortunately, once again, didn't do a whole heck of a lot. It seems like I either have a handful of spells that target creatures, or I have creatures, and never a nice mixture of both. Speaking of creatures, creature cards were not exactly a feature in Derek's deck, and instead he attacked with lands, which is pretty sweet. I'm still pretty disappointed that Obun doesn't untap the land, but as we saw, the deck can actually function pretty well, and with inclusions like Treetop Village, Derek wasn't really ever short for attackers this game. This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, Cool Stuff Inc., Multizone, Original Magic Art, and Alter Sleeves. But it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers, and my patrons. So I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.